C Sharp has had the concept of partial classes for a long time. In this 10 minute training video, we're gonna look at what partial classes are, how they work, and when to use them. Now, for most of my training, I work to give an in-depth perspective on technology, but sometimes you just need to get the quick answer to the question, how do I use this? That's why I created this 10 minute training series. So let's dive right into the code. And here I have a project, actually two projects in one solution. The one we're gonna look at first is our console app. We're gonna keep it really simple and just look at what partial classes are. Then we'll look at the next project once it becomes relevant. So I'm gonna create a new file. We're gonna call this um, just demo because we don't really have to worry too much about um, the, the, the setup of this. It's just, we're trying to create some type of demo to show off a partial class. So let's make this partial. So this is a valid keyword, partial. And what we're gonna, it's gonna allow us to do is to put our code into different files. Now, we're gonna talk about why in just a minute, but let's just get to the what first. So let's create a public void. Um, this is from demo. That's our method, okay? Just to have a method name we can actually see and uh, work with. Now let's create a new file. We're gonna call this um, other demo. And then in here, we'll do the same exact thing. We'll remove our usings and we'll make it a file scape, scope namespace. We're gonna make it public. And we're gonna say public partial. And we're gonna say demo. Okay, so even though the file is called other demo, the class is going to be called demo, which yes, this does cause a bit of a problem as far as name your files in the same name as your class, because if you're going to have a partial class, you have to call it the same name. So this is how it knows that public partial class demo and public partial class demo go together. Now in here, we're going to call this public void uh, from um, other demo file, okay? So there's another method. So now we have, this is from demo, and from other demo file are the two methods in our partial classes. So they're both named the same thing. And so what happens at compile time is that the, the editor takes these partial classes and puts them into one physical file. So, or one physical class actually. So it basically just mashes the two together. That's all it really does. And so if we come over here to program and we just say, let's declare a demo class. So demo, um, demo equals new. And we have to add a using directive. So let's control dot here to add that using for partial, um, using partial class demo. And now we can say demo dot and notice from other demo file as well as this is from demo. So there's methods from two different files in this one class definition. And again, the reason why is because at compile time, what happens is it says I have multiple partial classes called demo, then essentially I just, you know, cut this out of here and I put this over here. That's really what it's doing in essence, is it's combining the two files into one. Now, this does mean there's a few things that, that come with this. For instance, um, if I were to have a um, iDisposable interface on this and I implement that interface, um, let's just leave it as not the throw exception. But because I have this, this interface also applies to the demo class because again, it's one class. So the interfaces both apply. And if you had an inheritance structure, you could only inherit from one, you couldn't have an inheritance on both because we only have single inheritance in C Sharp, not multi-inheritance. Also, if you mark this as public, you cannot come over here and mark this as internal or anything else, like private or anything else, that won't work because of the fact that they have to have matching modifiers. So they have to be public and public or internal and internal or private and private. Whatever it's gonna be, they have to be the same, okay? So that's another limitation because again, 
it's just one file. So again, if I were to say demo.dispose, there's that method there, um, even though the interface and the, um, the method are applied to one of the classes, because these two get combined into one class, well, then it's just one class. So the question is going to come up, when would you ever use this? And the answer is not often. In fact, I think the primary reason why it was created was because of Windows Forms. So if you look at Windows Forms, and if you look at the code behind, so view code for our form, you see public partial class form one. Okay, so where's the other part of this? Because we only have a constructor here and that's it. Well, if you expand out form one, you can see that we have form1.designer.cs. If you double click on that, we have partial class form one. Again, partial class form one. So one thing to note here before we go on is that this is marked as public partial and this is, does not have a modifier, which because the types have to match, it's going to be public, um, which I don't love the fact that it's um, not specifying a modifier there. But now we have two different classes for form one that are going to get combined into one. The partial that we see normally, the code behind, which just has a constructor, and we have the designer code. So why was this separated out? Well, because this is stuff that, notice this is Windows Form Designer Generated Code, and it says, you know, do not modify the contents of this method of the code editor, which that's not really true. You can modify if you want, but um, if you do, just note that it can, it can cause problems. But notice we have 40 lines, 39 lines of code, but if I were to come over here to Form 1, open a toolbox, and let's just drag on a label, and let's drag on a text box, and then let's drag on a button. And then we can save that, we can close it out, and now notice that we're down to line 81 instead of 39. Why? Because this is all designer uh, code. But this is, just, um, this is just UI code that the designer has built for us based upon what we did in the designer. This makes our code very verbose. And so if we have this in the, the class right here, well, now you've got 100, 200, 500, 1,000 lines of code that aren't really our code. They're just layout code. And so Microsoft said, hey, let's separate these out into two different classes. One, which is the code behind, which is what you can modify. It's where you put your code, your logic, your UI logic, and then we'll have a separate one for the actual layout of the, the form and so on that the user doesn't normally see. And that way we can allow them to, you know, see just their code that they're going to modify, and yet we can have the code for the designer in a separate class, and it's the same class. That's why partial classes are created. However, there can be times when you might find it valuable to do something similar for similar reasons. So just note that you know if you have designer uh, built or um, code that is generated by a code generation of some type, you might use partial classes. That way you can modify, override, or change that code um, in your your logic without affecting the designer or the code generator's code in a way that's going to get overwritten the next time it's generated. So that's why partial classes exist. There can be benefits in other places, but for the most part, the only time we use partial classes is for things like the, the code behind versus the uh, auto-generated code for forms or in, in code generation somewhere else. So with that, thanks for watching, and as always, I am Tim Corey.